Hi everyone, this is Jay Johnson from DailyTexture.com. This morning I wanted to do a short video on one of the most frustrating things and one of the most often asked questions I receive, which is how to deal with whiskers on an animal when working in my method of working with textures as backgrounds. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Now you can do it any way you want to do it, and I'm going to explain. I'm going to show you my way and explain a couple of different things and I'm going to explain why I do it the way I do it. This is going to be my background texture and this is my image I'm going to be working with. And as you can see it's a pretty black cat, long hair, laying in a bed of leaves with the sun coming in off to the left there. Let me blow this up a little bit so you can see the whiskers. Well, that may be a little too much. There we go. You can see all those little hairs right here and the whiskers coming off right here. Now, I'm going to say right off the bat, I'm not going to worry about these whiskers showing exactly as they are in this picture. As you can tell in the picture, they're very faint. And they don't have to be super, super sharp, in my opinion. Because the viewer is... If they see just a hint of whiskers there, their mind is going to fill in the rest. But I have a lot of people who try to mask exactly around every whisker. And if you have a picture that you're working with where the whiskers really stand out, like let's say that this, this part right here, let me bring this up. See how that's got a white area right there and this black whisker right here really stands out it might be a little easier to mask around that in this case it's still too soft to mask around it but you can get around them and show a hint of them and that's what I do and there's a couple of different things you can do now I'm working in Topaz and Photo FX Lab in Topaz and this is the program I've had the most questions in Topaz has a module called Remask right here that I have. Not everybody has Remask though. Remask can get very exact around fur and whiskers if you and feathers if you want to. I don't use Remask a whole lot. I at the time that I might choose to use Remask is if I absolutely had to be very exact. For instance, with this, you don't need to be. In the original picture, the whiskers are there, but they're faded. They can still be the same way in my finished art. They can be there, but faded. In, if I was working a building, say, working on a building that had a sharp edge, and I, you know, obviously you can't fade out part of the building. It won't look right. So in that case, I might use remask or a car or a man-made object. But with an animal, it's not that important, in my opinion. Um, some people think it is, and that's fine. But in my opinion, for the work I do, it's not that important. Now, I've gone to the masking tab here, because I'm not going to use a remask. It's not that important that these stand out and be super, super evident that they're there. So I'm going to just use the regular masking tab in Photo FX Lab. There is a... a Set uh, what's the word? I've lost my brain. There's a, a, a module here, Edge Aware, on the bottom. I usually keep it all the way to the left, which means that when I mask close to something, um, I guess I should turn the or get on the right layer. When I mask close to something, that means it's um not even going to realize that something's there. It's going to go right over it like that. But if you put edge aware all the way to the right and you mask alongside something, you notice how it picks those edges up. It's not getting these fine hairs included that are sticking out over here because they're just way too soft. But if you put it back over here and you go along the edge, you're totally, you know, coming down and making a hard edge right there. But if you go the other direction with edge aware and you go along that edge, you get a little bit more choppiness to the edge because it's picking up on the fur. 
let's go up here to the ears because I think this will be a better example. Um, turn the edge aware all the way to the left and you come down and it goes right over that piece of fur. But if you put the edge aware to the right and you come down and you kind of work your way around it, it will, because that piece of fur is pretty sharp sticking out, it will pick up on that. And it won't be so harsh, like up here at the tip of the ears. It will pick up on that. But if you had edge wear this way, it's going to totally obliterate the tip of the ear. But if you go around it this way, it picks up on some of it. If it's very, very distinct from the background. So edge aware is one way to get around things that have a very distinct edge. Unfortunately, these whiskers don't because they're blending too much with the background as you can see. Let's move it over. They're just too faded. So in this case, I'm going to reset this mask and start over. In this case, I would do something a little different. First of all, the very first thing I did was in the background choice here, I chose a background that had similar tones to the background that's already there. There are a little bit more yellowish tones golden tones, but that's okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lower the flow when I go around this kitty cat and these whiskers. Blow this back up so you can see it. So the flow is like opacity. I'm going to leave edgeware up just in case it might want to pick up on some of this. I'm going to raise my brush size up just a little and I'm just going to gently tap as I go around here. Now as you can tell it is revealing the texture underneath as I do this but it is still allowing some of the fur and the whiskers to show. I'm just tapping and gently sweeping with a very low opacity brush. And as you can see, you can see his whiskers and stray hairs as you're going around. Now this is with the edge of wear on, so it's picking up on some of it. Like right here, these pieces are pretty sharp. Okay, so that did a pretty good job, but let's see, you still have too much of the background here. Let's just lower the brush size, raise this up so you can see it a little closer. And as you can tell, the whiskers are very faint. That's okay. They were that way in the original picture. Lower the brush size to go in between them. And once again, just move over those spots that you don't want showing. Like this, these black spots that are in the original background, which is leaves. Like so. And let's get this one. And this black spot right here, and this one right here, and this white spot right here. And I'm working with a very low opacity, so I'm not totally obliterating these spots. I'm just going over them with the brush to decrease them at a very low opacity. And then this one here, I can go over more because this is outside of the range of the whiskers. Now let's look at that from a distance. And you can still see a little white here by this one, so let's take that out. And then I'd even go over these a little bit more, just completely over the whiskers, where there's just a hint of them showing. But yet you've removed some of those distracting black elements from the background that were in between them. Like this. Then as you get further away from the whiskers and the fur that you're working with, you can raise your flow up and go with a bigger brush and get in there and really get rid of those extra little leaves. Now, I still have edge of wear on. I'm going to move it to the left where it takes it off because it's picking up on every little piece of the leaves too. And I don't want that. As I go around his body right here, I can turn edge wear back the other way. 
so it will get in close but not totally obliterate his fur. Now I'll turn it back the other way as I'm getting farther away. And I can even put the flow all the way up at this point and totally get rid of these if I want to all the way around. As I get in closer to him, I'm going to lower the flow and just tap right here, which is going to bring the texture over the whiskers and the stray, for, uh, stray hairs coming off of his ears, but it's not going to totally obliterate them. I don't like this spot right here, so I am going to go over that. And I am going to just bring it right over his fur just a little bit, which might look a little funny right now, but then I'm going to go back the other way and bring some of that back. And you can go back and forth like this until you get a look that you like for around that area. And you may even go back and bring back some of the, you could bring back some of the leaves by just tapping like that if you wanted to. But see, there's just a hint of the whiskers showing, and I'll bring up the original. That's the original, and this is the one with the hint of the whiskers showing. You see they're there, and they're not very as distinct as they are here, but they're not really distinct here either. You just need to give a hint that they're there, though. The viewer will fill in the rest. If you want more of a hint, then by all means, go back the other direction, tap some of this out, and bring it back and show some of the leaves too. It's just very difficult to get around them exactly. So that's one way to deal with it. If you still want more of a um, more than a hint right here, you've got a little guideline of where the whiskers are coming out by just leaving leaving a little bit of faintness there. At the after you've masked away everything else. And if you still feel like you want some more whiskers showing on this side, you can always take your finished image into your paint program. And then using a very small brush, choosing a color from the cat right here, you could take your very small brush and sweep it this way in very tiny lines. And I would do that on a new layer. I would use a very... Uh, I wouldn't use a very strong opacity paintbrush. I would, pro in my case, I would probably use a pencil and just pick the color from the cat and then just come on out like this, sweeping it out. You could use a paintbrush and use some paint. I wouldn't use it at full opacity because it would really stand out. I would use it at a lower opacity and just kind of sweep out very small, skinny brush strokes going in the direction of the whiskers on a separate layer. Then you can apply a Gaussian blur to that layer if you want to soften it a little bit. If you don't want to soften it, you could just play with your opacity of the layer and raise and lower it so that the whisker layer will be blended enough the way you like it. And you can even, after you've drawn your whiskers, you can mask away areas where you feel that they're too strong. If you like the strength in one area but you don't like it in another, you can just make a mask for the whisker layer to mask away the areas that don't look right and blend them in a little bit better. So that's something you can do if you really are intent on having very strong whiskers, say, on this side. And as you can tell, when he's at uh, full view here, you can barely see the whiskers, but in his original image, when he's at full view, you can also barely see the whiskers. So it's not that important to mask, in my opinion, the way I do it, to mask them away exactly. Now I would probably go with, I have a very low flow and a very big brush and just tap around here a little bit more on this outside edge to bring some of that color over into his fur right there. If I wanted to go around the rest of him a little stronger, raise the flow up. So I've got edge of wear on and it's going around and it's picking up the edges of his fur 
like so. And then I can go with Edgeware off and go back and get these dark areas of the leaves I don't want showing that it also picked up on. Because Edgeware is going to pick up on anything that has an edge. And then I would lower the flow and actually bring some of this texture right over his body to blend it in softly. This green spot on the tail, I'd probably just totally get that masked away to blend him in. I'm not going to sit here and do the whole image right now, but I would be just be going back and forth until I got a, a look that I liked. So if I wanted the full texture showing behind him, this is the way I would handle it as I went around him. If I didn't want the full texture showing, I would go with a low flow and a big brush and just gently tap so I could leave some of the leaves showing, but not all of them. And I know I'm going over him a little bit too much, but I go back the other way. And I'll just bring that back to bring back his details in the area where I want details to show. And if I feel like I've taken away too much, I'll go back and bring back some of the leaves as well. Just depends on how much you want to show of the background, of the original background. But that's how I handle whiskers. I just leave them showing very faintly when they're mixed in with the background like that. I could, if I, like I said, if I wanted these to be sharper, I could use Remask, or I could go into a paint program and just add some whiskers. Just by leaving a hint, I have the general area where they are, and I have the direction they're going, so I could just follow that line on a new layer with some paint or pencil where I've chosen the color from the cat's face right here to match. And I would do that on a new layer, though, so I could adjust that opacity. That's the way I handle whiskers and actually, you know, in stray pieces of fur. But this edge aware tool here is wonderful when you're trying to do that. And it does need to, <clears throat> excuse me, it does need to be a very distinct difference between the stray furs and whiskers when you're using the edge aware tool all the way to the right if you want it to pick it up. If it's not distinct enough, it won't pick it up because it's not quite sure where the edge is because the original edge is too soft. So it does work best when there's a very distinct difference. But that's how I would handle the fur, stray hairs, and the whiskers. And I hope that helps some of you who are facing that same dilemma. And thanks for watching and have a great day.